Hello everyone. I'm so glad to be here with you in this video, in which we'll discuss a section that has been confirmed from our friends and colleagues as one of the hardest to be studied, so we'll try together to make it clear and easy. We provided this video with Arabic subtitles so that you can follow up easily. In order to get the full benefits of this video, we recommend that you watch it while you are studying our 10th lecture. What makes this section special is that as we speak about articles, there are two dimensions to be considered, a scientific and a lingual one. So by the end of this video, we'll be able to tell the general form of an article and some procedures and methods to treat menorrhagia. Before we start, we have to ask ourselves an important question. What is an article? An article is a piece of writing that concentrates on a certain topic. And as we are speaking of medical articles, we should know that medical topics will face us up. And it's important not to forget that an article's form varies a lot between journals and authors. But the form and the components we are going to explain are those that we are going to be asked about in the exam. We get the article from a journal, which may have many others, and we see in the article many major headings that may also contain subheadings. And these headings and their literary value is what we are going to study and fully understand in this session. As you can see here, this is the article that is involved in our subject, and it's divided into its major headings, as we said. So we have a title, authors, summary, introduction, results, discussion, and references. In the head of the article, and before anything else, we'll see the title. The purpose of the title is to give you an idea about what you are going to read, and to let you know why this research was done. Medical Research Council randomized trial of endometrial resection versus hysterectomy and management of menorrhagia. The mention of the word research indicates that we are investigating a certain case. But what do we investigate? The final goal of the study is to know the best way to treat menorrhagia, so we are investigating it. And the word management tells us that we are discussing methods of treatment. So from here we can tell that the title achieved its literary value as we know that the article is about a research that is investigating menorrhagia by comparing between two methods of treatment. And by the end of this article we should know which one is better. But on the other hand, the title has many medical terms that we should be aware of. What is menorrhagia? Simply speaking, it's a heavy bleeding during the menstrual cycle or the menstrual bleeding that lasts more than seven days due to pelvic infections, tumor, hormonal dysfunction, or the usage of IUCD. As a quick note, we can say that IUCD is a device that is usually made of metal or copper to prevent the implantation of the fertilized egg in the endometrium. The aim of this study is to declare whether the endometrial resection is better or hysterectomy to treat menorrhagia. But what are these two procedures? First, let's talk about endometrial resection. It's a technique in which the physician scrapes a part of the endometrium, and it differs from endometrial ablation, because in the ablation we take out the entire endometrium. As endometrial resection includes the scrapping of only a part of the lining of the uterus, women who undergo this procedure still can conceive and have babies. And it's a non-surgical operation, so it's similar to the dilation and curettage by inserting a tube through the vagina to reach the womb, so it doesn't demand of making an incision. Whereas when we speak about hysterectomy, we are speaking about a surgical procedure which includes making an incision in the abdomen to remove the entire womb. But as we leave the vagina and the ovaries, a woman still can have sex and her sexual desires are not affected 
but she is deprived of pregnancy. So hysterectomy is a more traumatic procedure than endometrial resection. However, in some cases, the womb must be removed to save the woman's life, such as in the presence of cancers, malignancy, and fibroids. After we've seen the title, we have to move on to the second component, which is the authors. And the authors are the people who have edited or done this article or research. So we'll just see a group of names. And a research that is done by many authors is called a co-research or a joint research. The next heading is very important to understand the article. When we speak about the summary, we should know that it's a smaller version of the research. So by reading it, an idea about why the research was done, how the research was done, and what the research has come up with should be completely formed. For that, many people prefer to read the summary instead of the whole article to save their time. But how could the summary achieve this goal? In our article, we can recognize four subheadings that we are going to analyze one by one. They are the background, methods, findings, and the interpretation. We will start with the background. The background here is the background of the article, in which the authors mention the reasons why they have done this research. And we can divide it into three main ideas. The most frequent indication for hysterectomy is menorrhagia, even though the uterus is normal in large number of patients. So they are telling us here that before the research, doctors used to resort to hysterectomy whenever they detect a case of menorrhagia. Although in large number of patients, they could have avoided it and looked for alternatives. While the second part says that transcervical resection of the endometrium is a less drastic alternative, but success rates have varied and menorrhagia can occur. So why is it an alternative? Because it's less drastic or traumatic. But is it really effective? They are going to compare between the two interventions that we have mentioned before to know which one is better. And the last reason is to test the hypothesis that says that the difference in the proportion of women dissatisfied and requiring further surgery within three years of TCRE or hysterectomy would be no more than 15%, whether it's true or not. Next, we move on to the methods. In the methods, we find the way that the researchers followed to get the data they want from the study. We can see from the first line how the volunteers of the study are picked in a randomly controlled way without any previous intentions for either TCRE or hysterectomy. But the number of patients that have chosen TCRE is double the number with hysterectomy, and we'll see this with the exact figures and findings. But in the end, to declare whether hysterectomy is better or TCRE, they measured the psychological and social satisfaction of the subjects after undergoing one of these interventions. After showing us the purpose behind the study and the way to achieve it, the researchers have to write down the results they have got. In this text, we can see a lot of numbers, but we are not obliged to deal with them. What we should know is that women were more satisfied with hysterectomy than TCRE. But the slight difference in numbers between them doesn't determine which one is better to be done, because in the end we discovered that every intervention has its advantages over the other one. The only advantage that hysterectomy has over TCRE is that it demands lesser further procedures after it's done, because the uterus is removed, so menorrhagia is less likely to recur. But on the other hand, TCRE has the rest of the advantages over hysterectomy, as it's done under local anesthesia and takes less time to stay in the hospital. And most importantly, women still can conceive after it. 
And in the end, to get the final statement of the research, we have to take a look on interpretation. DCRE is an acceptable alternative to hysterectomy in the treatment of menorrhagia for many women with no other serious disorders. So we can consider TCRE an acceptable alternative for hysterectomy, but with a condition that the woman has no other disorders. And this note is very important for you to keep in mind, because in some cases, DCRE isn't acceptable and hysterectomy must be done in cases of malignancy or fibroids, as we said before. Now in the next passages, we'll find the same ideas of the summary but in a more detailed way. So in the introduction, we can see how the researchers are showing us the possible ways to treat menorrhagia. The underlying sentence in the text indicates that heavy menstrual bleeding can't be treated with medicines. So we have to resort to a non-medical procedure. Here we have to look for the etiology of the case. If its origin is malignant, hysterectomy must be done as we said before, and this is the surgical management of this disorder. But if it's caused by a benign etiology, endometrial ablation or resection can be done as a non-surgical alternative, and during the endometrial ablation after the doctors reach the womb through the vagina, a source of heat such as laser or electricity is used to burn the endometrium as you can see in this video. And the left photo represents another technique that uses radio frequency to achieve the same goal. Next in the results, we can see nothing except a table of numbers that represents the data of the research. But as we said before, that numbers have no value in our way of study. So we'll just move on directly to the discussion where we see that authors are turning back to the idea of the comparison between TCRE and hysterectomy. But first, they mentioned two different research that had come up with the same results as ours. The first one is done by Greenberry, which is the name of a scientist. And it says that menorrhagia has a bad influence on the mental health of the patients. And he did his experiments on patients who attended to gynecology clinics without visiting the hospital. Whereas the second research for GAF shows that hysterectomy has its benefits over patients with this disorder, as we mentioned in the findings of the summary. But why did they mention these studies? To say that they have got the same results in our article as they investigated menorrhagia. But they also experiment TCRE besides hysterectomy, and they find that it has almost the same good influence as hysterectomy. So we'll say it for the last time. We can't determine whether hysterectomy is better or TCRE. But TCRE is a safer and easier non-surgical alternative as long as the patient has no other serious disorders. Now in the end of any article, we must see the references which play a big role in the reliability of the article. And this is what is called evidence-based medicine. So by adding the references, the authors are showing you that you can trust their information because it's taken from a trustworthy journals or research papers. There are many ways and types to add references. But it's enough for us now to be able to read and understand the references that are mentioned in our article. So we'll pick the first one and read it. Magus A.L. is the name of the author, while Management of Menorrhagia is the title of the study. BMG refers to the British Medical Journal. 1990 is the year of issue. 300 is the number of issue. While 38 to 1537 is the number of pages where you can find this study. At this point, we can say that we have finished all of our article. But there's an extra heading that you may find in other articles, so they added it to our subject. It is patients and methods. This part of the article usually comes after the introduction and before the results. And it's used to describe how the patients are recruited in the study. First of all, 
We have to ask the patients for their permission to use their health information to complete the study. And then we should assure them that their information is used for scientific purposes only. And to save the patient's privacy, each patient is given a number instead of his name. So when the doctor is ready to start the treatment, he calls a coordinating center and the patient is given an appointment on the randomized schedule. And here is the end of our video. I hope you find it useful. As always, our team is waiting to get your feedback and answer your questions anytime you want. Thank you for watching. RBC's team. We carry your oxygen.